Go for it. All right. So for those that don't know me, I'll just introduce myself real quick. Um, I'm Ashley LaSure, and I'm one of the Star Diamonds on this team. I have been coaching for a little over five years now, and I have been a full-time coach for almost four years now, which is insane. Um, I am a mom of three, so I run this business from home while being a mom as well. And um, I feel like that's the really, really special things about me. And so I was going to do the power hour tonight. And since I don't, it's, is it working for anyone else? I just tried and nothing's really working for me. So, okay. So I'll just share a couple of the things that I was going to share with you guys that I feel like, um, a lot of the other coaches haven't really shared that they do in their power hours just because it is a little different. That way you guys kind of know what I do, but then I'm going to go into organization and creating your schedule and all of that fun stuff. And then hopefully I can do another power hour another time for you guys. Um, so the first, the few things that I was going to do for a power hour, is posting schedule. So for me, I spend five minutes in the morning after my workout, I'll take a few different pictures and then I will kind of figure out what my schedule is going to be in terms of posting for that day or even the next couple of days. So for me, I've been trying to get in a schedule of posting. Um, let me look at what mine is. I always forget it. And it's all F's, so I kind of remember it. It's family, fun, fitness, food. And I've been making my food one a different filter just so it kind of stands out from the rest of my stuff on Instagram. Um, and I just started kind of doing that, getting then the loop of that schedule. But for instance, this morning after my workout, I took a few different pictures and you don't have to post the same picture that you took that day. A lot of times, most of the times I'm posting pictures that I took four days ago of my workout or um, the day before. In terms of where it fits in my posting schedule, that's when, what I'm going to post. Um, so I figure out what the next two days of posting are. So today, fun, tomorrow, fitness. So then I figure out from my past pictures of what I'm gonna fit into today for a fun and what I'm gonna fit into the next one for fitness. And then I put it into my Instagram preview app. And that way, so when I go to post, I already know what picture I'm gonna post. And in my notes, I put everything that I'm gonna post with that picture. So then for me, when it comes time to picking that picture and post, I just go grab that picture from the preview app and then I go to my notes and I copy what I had written before and then I go and post it. That's why, that way you're not having to sit there and come up with something to post, you know, in that moment and you already have that routine that you are going to do down. So that's what I do for the posting schedule. And I usually only spend five minutes on it. Um, and then adding new friends. I'm not going to go into that because a lot of the other power hours are the same connections, invites, and then the last thing that I do that um, I was going to go over with you guys is commenting on people who ghost me. So people that you've invited, um, that you've talked to, and they just stopped talking to you, or they never even answered your message. I always go through those people and I go comment on their stuff. And the reason I do this, I know a lot of people will, um, will just message them again, but the reason I do that is because it sees that you're looking at their stuff you're watching their stuff too and you're not just you know messaging them and um a lot of times when i do that they always message me and they're like oh i'm so sorry i never messaged you back but seeing you comment on my stuff it made me um remember a lot i know i'm a mom i need constant reminders i just had a girl sign up right before this call and i reminded her three times yesterday and then tonight i reminded her again and she goes i'm so sorry with starting a new business, I just, you know, totally forgot. So don't feel like that they're always ghosting you. They might have just forgot. So um, I need that constant reminder. So just commenting on their stuff, I'll always say something, but I'll always ask a question. That way they're saying something back to me. And then a lot of times they'll message me after that. So that was the only other thing I was going to share in the power hour. Um, but then I'll, I'll just dig into organization right now. First and foremost, you guys have to create a consistent schedule, consistent schedule that you can fit into your day consistently every day. And I preach consistently because that is the key to success in this business is just being consistent with what you're doing. Um, even if you have 10 minutes, 
to do every day, find where you can fit it in your schedule where you're doing it consistently, even if it's just 10 minutes. It doesn't have to be a full hour or you know 40 minutes. Even if it's just 10 minutes, find that time in your schedule every day that you can do it. Um, for me, my consistent schedule that works for me, and remember too that it doesn't work for everyone either. Um, and it's always gonna change too. Mine has changed numerous times. When I first started, I was working my ass off in three jobs and going to school and taking care of my mom and being a single mom. So at that time, I literally only worked my business for 20 minutes a day, um, but I did it consistently. And then I started working from home. So then I had a little bit more time, but then my schedule changed again. And then I got pregnant again. So then I couldn't wake up early like I wanted to anymore because when you're pregnant, you're like a zombie. Um, so my schedule changed again. And then now it's changed recently again now that you know I have a toddler running around in sports and all that. So you just have to remember it's always gonna change, but you always have to sit down and figure out what you can do consistently and um, fit it into your schedule. So for me right now, it's the mornings. For me, I can always consistently show up in the morning. I wake up, I get my workout in, um, and then I work after that. And then I try to do it before the kids wake up, but I don't always get everything done. Um, and then I will fit in more work after I do breakfast with the kids and all of that. So that's just what works for me. So you just have to sit down and really figure out what your schedule is that you can fit it in consistently. Um, oh, I wanted to cover two because I know I said that even if you only have 10 minutes, just make sure you are doing it consistently. It doesn't have to be, I know a lot of coaches think that you have to fit an entire power hour of work into that 10 minutes or you have to do everything all at once and you don't have to do that. You can split it up. Um, say you only have five minutes in the morning before work to do something. So pick what you wanna do for five minutes but have that schedule where you know what you're gonna do. Say you're gonna do follow-ups. Do another you know, five minutes on your lunch break. Uh, do another 10 minutes later on, um, right before you go to bed. You always have those small pockets of time, but you have to be strategic with it. If you just, so for me, I wake up in the morning and I always make my to-do list for that today. So I have like a to-do list thing right here. And every morning, mine's labeled like Monday through Friday. I'll go to the day, so today's Wednesday, and I'll just put everything that I need and want to do that day. And then that way for me, I'm visual. I have to cross it off anytime I do it. Um, that way you know, so, okay, I have five minutes right now. What do I have on my to-do list to do so? Okay, I'm gonna do five minutes of follow-ups. Then you know you have something to do and you're not just scrolling Facebook because I know a lot of us get stuck in scrolling when we don't really have a plan of what to do. So just make sure you have that plan. Um, what else did I wanna chat about? Hitting Success Club, I know Sam wanted me to maybe touch base on how I've been hitting Success Club 10 and then also um, hitting underneath my spouse, which is Cody, my boyfriend, the past few months. And I feel like I don't really have a special answer for that. Um, and what I'm just gonna tell you guys is just being consistent. I have that you know routine that I do every day. I show up no matter what. Um, even if it's not at the same time, I'm still showing up, um, having, you know, my to-do list that I'm working off of. So that way I'm, I always know what I need to do rather than, you know, scrolling Facebook, trying to figure out what to do or scrolling Facebook, trying to find somebody to sign up. I just, I know what I need to do and I'll spend that time doing it. Um, and really making sure that you do those things too, because I know in the past I would, Sam knows I literally would wait until the last day of the month to get any success club points. And when I would work that last day, I would always hit success club, even if I was at zero. And it's because I wouldn't do the things until the last day of the month, my consistent things that I need to do, which is inviting, following up, all those things. But if you're doing those things, even for just five minutes every day, then you're going to, that's what I do now. I just, I mean, I don't do it just five minutes, but. I spend that time doing those things every day, even if I'm only sending out a few invites rather than you know 20 invites a day. I'm doing those things every day, constantly having those conversations and talking to people consistently, and that's why I am hitting 
my success club early on rather than the last day. Um, and I want to stress too that you want to make sure you work your business first. If you're working a spouse business, hit success club under there, under there, your goal, and then place people underneath your spouse. And you want to make a plan to do that early in the month underneath your account. So then the last couple of weeks of the month, you can focus on your spouse because it's really important to work both. And I'm going to use Nicole Faulkner. She's one of my coaches. If you know her, she's a prime example of that. I told her her first coach that she signed up should be her husband and she did it. And now she's making a killer income off her first business center and her husband's because she grew them both together every month and didn't wait. So that's, it's very important to do that. Um, let's see what else. Be consistent, show up every day. Uh, I can't stress that enough too. I sh every morning you want to have a routine. Well, not every morning, but you, for me, it's every morning. You want to have the routine, um, especially so a few things that you do every day. That's the same. So for me, I wake up, everyone knows I'm going to wake up and do my workout or my energy chug, then my workout, celery juice, and then throughout the day, I'll just sprinkle little things of what I'm doing on my Instagram stories. But everyone knows I'm going to do those few things every day, no matter what. And that's why people will follow you. Um, I have people who will message me when I don't do something and they're like, hey, why didn't you do this? Are you okay? So pick a few things that you can do routinely and not, it's going to hold you accountable, number one, but then people know what to get from you. Um, like Sam, she does her, I think, apple cider vinegar in the morning and her weigh-in. She weighs herself in the morning um, and then her workout. That's her, her, that's her routine every morning. Everyone has a routine and that's why people, people know what to get from that when they're watching you. So I highly suggest having a few different things that you show up every day because not only are people watching it, but it's holding you accountable to do those things too. Oh, I think that's all I had for you guys. So a couple of things I wanted to mention. One, when Ashley is talking about a consistent schedule, just to shout her out, she was waking up at 3.30 in the morning when she first started coaching, when she also was working and caring for her mom and all of that. So I know all of you guys see all your faces on here and I know that you're putting in the work, but even on the days that you think you don't have time, are you up at 3.30 in the morning? Probably not. Um, and then another thing too, that Ashley does is she sends voice messages. And I know that Jackie, you were saying that like, when you can, if you could just talk to someone, they can tell your passion, you have so much greater success with that. So I challenge you guys to send voice messages send video messages. Like you don't have to always, I mean, you, I like to use my snippets, but make it your own and like make it sound like you. And if you want set up a 15 minute phone call with somebody to explain it versus going back and forth all the time. So be consistent. There's, you can be flexible in your approach. Uh, when I go off of something Sam just said, uh, I notice like I do a lot of the voice message messaging and video videoing too. But one tip I would give when you're doing that is make sure that when you're sending those, you are speaking with confidence and you know what you're talking about. If you're like, Hey, um, I kind of have like this challenge group coming up and like, if you're slow and you sound like you don't know what you're talking about, on to the next. <laughs> and they say too that you can tell when somebody is smiling on the other line, like even if you're just on a phone call. So definitely if you're sending voice messages, have your glass of wine and make sure you're in a good spirits and <laughs> smile and like just be excited and happy. And you know, you don't need to have all the answers. Say what you know, and then say, hold on a second, I'm gonna message my coach and get the answer for you. Um, but yeah, just be confident that that these programs are working for you, which they are, and that they can be the thing that changes their life too. And it's going to shine through in your posts, in your conversations, in your voice messages, everything. I always forget to recommend doing voice messages and Ashley does them like all the time. And I'm like, right. Um, I, so I've, it was making me so mad today because I couldn't send any voice messages. Mm -hmm. So I had to type everything and I was like, oh, this is so annoying. <laughs> I don't know how to for type me. anymore. Yeah, do you guys have any questions at all on anything? I have a question. 
I'm at a plateau with my Instagram followers and I feel like I'm doing all the things and I don't know, maybe do you have any tips? Cause you, you're pretty successful on Instagram. I feel like I'm consistent and all that stuff. And I feel like I do the five, three, one method, but I don't know, maybe I'm missing something. I'm just like, stuck. I uh, noticed a lot lately that I've inc increased followers from doing lives and the IGTVs. So I don't know if you do those. Do you do those? I've done them. I could be doing more. I would start being consistent with them, even just like once a week, because I've been trying to do that and I've noticed that it has increased every time. Okay. But That's other than that, I mean, I still only just do the things that you do, the hashtags, um, following, you know, people you want to follow. Mm -hmm. I noticed an increase of followers this week and, um, I, the only thing different is that I'm commenting on more people's stuff. And what I do in particular is go to the Instagram homepage and you see your story and then all the other people's stories. I click on the first one. And if it's a coach, I swipe right by it or like, I don't know, a celebrity or something, just swipe by until you get to somebody that you don't know that clearly you're following or whatever, and then comment from their story. And I think it's seeing such great success because they're listed in order of when they posted. So they literally just posted like 16 seconds ago and I'm there commenting. So they're on live then right then and there. And so even if they don't respond to my comment, they, I think are coming to my page and like, Oh, you know, she's cool. I should follow her. Or like, who is this girl? Why is she messaging me? So I think just commenting and showing up because they always say that when in doubt, the better follower you are on other people's posts, the better followers you're going to get. So like if you are commenting and I love Ashley's tips of go comment on people that are ghosting you comment on it, or even like have scrolling be part of your power hour and like scroll and like just hit those prospects or people who aren't already signed up with you and comment on all of it. Another thing too, <laughs> I talk about it all the time, birthday messages, send birthday messages out. I meant to add that to my uh, to-do. I just added it now for the power hour. What do you say? Just, hey, happy birthday. I just say something. Let me find one. It's really simple. I always say happy birthday. I hope it's the best one yet. Because you can't do wrong, right? Right. That's basically, So I say happy birthday, love. <laughs> Hope you have a great day today. That's literally all I say. And you think that it does good? Yeah, I always have at least one out of maybe 10, 15 people that I've had sign up. All right. I'm going to start doing birthday messages. Yeah, because it brings it up your past messages too. So then I always notice too that people I've talked to in 2015 that I never even followed up with. I'm like, oh, I mm -hmm. never followed up with this person. So not only do you see that, but then I've had people who are like, oh, thank you. Um, I've been meaning to message you because I always see your fitness stuff. So it might just remind them things like that too. And it literally takes one minute to two minutes, depending on how many people have a birthday that day. <laughs> I stole a script once. I need to get better at like actually sending the messages, but I stole a script from someone who sent it to me and it was another coach. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is the sweetest message. So I saved it and it was like, hey, happy birthday. I hope you have the happiest of birthdays. Um, you know, birthdays are my favorite. And then I ended with, are you doing anything fun? You know, so it was like over the top, completely obnoxious. But I'm like, it put a smile on my face. And I was like, that's so cute. So, yeah. Yeah, and it's better than commenting because how many comments on people's walls do people say happy birthday? They just get lost. Mm -hmm. So then if you private message them, they're like, oh, that's cool. She cares. Um, I had a quick question. So I heard, I think it was you, Sam, that mentioned earlier the 531. I've heard of it, but I actually don't really know what it is. So. Do you mind explaining that? <laughs> yeah, so Chelsea explained it, but she just left for her computer. Um, so 531 is you follow, you find somebody and you like five of their pictures, comment on three, and then follow them. 
lots of people see success with it. What I'm seeing success with lately is not that because it takes a lot of time to like all the pictures and then to comment on three and then to follow them. So what I'm doing is I find someone for, based on a variety of things. And then I do like three to four pictures and follow and then go back. I don't comment on anything unless it's something like an adorable puppy or purple hair, you know, or like something that I'm like just naturally compelled to comment on, then I will. But other than that, I just like three to four pictures, follow and go back. All right, cool, cool. I know some people just go down the list and do follow, 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 follow. So they don't like anything. But the reason I do it is because then they're getting at least four to five notifications from me. They're going to see Samantha says liked four pictures and followed her. And they're going to be way more, at least in my opinion, I would actually go to their page versus a new follower I don't even look at, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I always, when it comes up in your notifications, if somebody follows you and then likes like three photos, I'm like, oh, who's this person? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Leah. I'm your cat. I'm living hey. through your cat. <laughs> <laughs> he loves his chair. He like thinks it's his own. It's photogenic. Like, look at him. He's living. <laughs> How are the cats doing with the move? <laughs> He's fine. I just have one cat and then one dog. Um, yeah, he was like meowing like wild yesterday, but he's cool now. <laughs> What else, you guys? Any questions or any reason that you're not at Success Club 10 right now? Like, what's holding you back in conversations or anything? I think for me, it's just, um, like Ashley said earlier, I'm just consistency. It's just consistency for me. And, like, I know that's what it is. So I just have to, like, kick my own ass in gear and just be like, do the fucking work. <laughs> I think that's everyone. I, I think. The thing for everyone is always just consistency. That's how I think. Sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was gonna say I think people get. I know for me, I would get overwhelmed because I'd be like, "Okay, I gotta get thirty invites out today," and I would do it. But then, like the next couple of days, I would take a break from the simplest things. So if things like that overwhelm you, just break it up. Do at least ten that day, ten the next day. You know. As long as you're doing something consistently every day, that's better than, you know, doing nothing. Yeah, I, um, cause I, one of my things I was struggling with was like putting together a decent power hour for myself. So I wasn't just like following people for an hour and like not getting anything else done. Um, so I am going, I don't know if any of you have tried it yet, but the business activity tracker, have any of you guys try that because I'm going to try that and see if I can if it helps me a lot more to like be more productive during my power hours I think it will just kind of <laughs> like I have my to-do list it's literally like a business activity tracker and you know I know what I have to do and I mark it off when I'm done so I think it definitely will help you okay cool yeah, I was gonna say, I've been doing like adding to it on the back so one of my goals is to grow my Instagram followers so for me I like to see it so on the bottom I write down like so this week it's the 7th through the 13th so I have 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 with a line and I write my number each day like in the morning I look to see how many followers and I just write it um, because for me I just like to see it increase and it's motivation for me to go follow more people or whatever. Um, and then I, I've really been, um, whatever the word is, good at using this lately. And on the back, I do it a little more. Like, I'll write invites Thursday through Wednesday so I can do tallies each day. Um, and then I have a section for follow-ups, and I'll write the names on there, too, just to go a little more rather than just checking it off, saying, yes, I did it. Um, and on the bottom, I just have, um, like my bonus points for the week. I just like to track everything a little bit more. So kind of taking it one step further. And when I don't know what to do to go to this, it's so easy to say, okay, I didn't do this. And to reflect on the last week, looking through to see what's blank answers your questions as to why you're not moving your business forward. Yeah, that's so true. I used to always feel, I actually have a pile of them. I don't even, they were, oh yeah, right here. This is a pile of my business activity trackers. <laughs> and there's more over here too. I would always, 
fill it out every week. I staple it together for the week. And that way I can always go back and see, okay, why am I not at this goal that I wanted to be right now? And I just go back and figure out why. Because then you can always figure out why. You didn't invite mm -hmm. enough. You didn't follow up with enough. And I, I'm very motivated by crossing things off of a list. Like that alone, I want to see it like all checked off or like all filled out. I was going to say too, have a compelling vision. Like if you're just like, I want to hit success club 10 to hit success club 10 or success club five. And that's why you're doing the activities. It's going to be so easy to stop because you're like, what does that even mean? What is like, well, I'm going to be recognized on a board versus if you know that success club 10 is like, the minimum of $40 per person times five people do the math. Plus if they sign up as coaches, that's a hundred dollar extra bonus. What are you going to do with that 200 ish, 300 ish dollars? You know, maybe you're going to go on a weekend getaway or like having something that compelling or like you're going to save up for a house, whatever. That is what will motivate you to show up every day. Not just like 10 invites done, you know? So having some sort of exciting vision and also Knowing that people are waiting for you to fail, especially, I don't know when you sign up as a coach, but when you're new, people are waiting for you to stop posting. People are waiting for you to like suddenly slowly go up. Cause let's face it, a lot of coaches sign up and then they're gone in a month or in three months. So the more often you show up, same thing with consistency, like they're going to be like, Oh shit, this girl is still around and it's five months later. Now I'm going to message her and now I'm going to respond to her. So that motivates me. I'm like, uh -uh. I'm going to prove you wrong. I'm going to be here in a year, in five years. And so two things, have a vision and then also prove people wrong. Sam is spot on with that. Like when I, ever since I started trying to build Ben to Diamond, I'm way more motivated and work harder than if I was just aiming for Success Club 10 myself. I would take way more days off if I was at, if I was at six on the 10th, probably wasn't doing much more until the 20th, you know, because that's just, your goals were too small. Like Sam told me for two and a half years until I, you know, started to act on that. Um, so yeah, having a bigger goal makes you way more motivated to show up and put in the specific work versus the like busy. I was always the coach that just signed three people up. And like I always, from the beginning, I would just sign three people, three people up and then I would just be super quiet on social media. And if somebody wanted to sign up, I would be like, okay, please wait till next month. Please wait till next month. Like, <laughs> try to save people so I could hit success club again. Cause I had this limiting belief. Like there's no way I could do another three. Like there's no way, like I'm not that good. <laughs> so, um, but like the final like fire for me was that I got fired from my full-time job. So I had to pay the bills somehow. So and I got a little fire under my butt, and then I paid all my bills. It was cool. I mean, not, not then, but. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you who have worked full-time jobs and then transitioned into full-time coaching, uh, what suggestions would you have if you were starting to feel burned out, like just working a lot and then trying to do this a lot and not really – I don't know. I feel like I don't take enough time – to myself to like relax and recenter myself except for like my morning drives to work and from work and other than that I'm coming home and doing this and I I just I don't know I'm getting to the point where I'm feeling a little burnt out but I don't want to like give up on myself either what is your name Alex okay <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I can't look at that anymore. Okay. I mean, I'll start off. <laughs> I will say, I, I still get on, I still get burnt out. I think there's always seasons of getting like pushing so hard and you get burnt out if you're not seeing the results that you want. Right. And so um, I still go through those times. My best tip is unplug unplugging and like putting your phone in the other room, taking a weekend off. And some people might say like, you're, well, my business isn't going to grow if I'm not working it, but being in a quality mental space will make you that much more effective when you are working. And so, and I have the best post ideas when I'm not glued to my phone 24 seven, looking at somebody else's posts, you know? So my tip would be to Pencil in time, just like you pencil in work and you pencil in your business, pencil in time where you do not have your phone. 
or you go to the movies or like do something. Cause for me, if I'm not, if I'm just sitting on the couch, my phone's in the other room, I'm going to be like thinking about what people are doing on their phones, you know? So yeah. like do something outside of the house and yeah, unplug. Okay. I think, that, I think that's kind of my hardest thing is like, I've been having my phone on me 24 seven. So I feel like I need to be doing something 24 seven, you know, and I don't, um, like I've been trying the last couple days to not stress myself out with posting cause I'm getting sick and like, I have a lot going on at work. So I've been trying to like find that balance still since I'm new to this. Mm -hmm. I mean, Chelsea and Ashley are way busier than me. They have kids and everything. So I would love to hear what you guys would say. Um, for me, I think I shared this with you before, Alex, when I was working, um, I mean, I was working three jobs too, on top of being a mom, taking care of my mom. And then I was finishing college at the same time too. So I literally only had maybe 20 minutes and I either had that 20 minutes either on my lunch break, 3.30 in the morning or at midnight. So it wasn't like dinner time or anything like that. It was just those three times are the only time I had 20 minutes. So for me, I did something different every day for those 20 minutes. So like Monday I did just 20 minutes of inviting. Tuesday I did just 20 minutes of connecting. Wednesday I did just 20 minutes of whatever and so on. Um, and then I, just like I still do to this day too, I have a plan too. So you have those plans of what you're going to do each day for the week. But then I also create my posts ahead of time, which I still do now. And that way in the morning before work, you can just pick one of your pictures that you planned for, copy your text that you created, and then just post it super quick. That way you're not thinking about it. It's super quick and it's done and over with. And even if you just do that, on say like Sundays, where you pick the photos you're gonna post, type up something for each one, and then pick your what you're gonna do for your 20 minutes every day. That way you have that plan. Kind of like meal prepping. I did, I did sit down with Chelsea and like figure out days of like what I'm doing on each day so it's not as like overwhelming for me. Um, but I think I just have to get out of my head of the mentality that I need to be doing this like 24 seven in order to be like successful. Like I want it so bad, but like I've been getting a lot of no's lately and that's been discouraging. So I'm like trying not to let that impact me and like still going, but I'm feeling like I'm running out of my warm market a little bit. So I need to start like reaching out more to people I don't know. And that's like scary for me. Which you would think it's less scary because, like, who, they don't know who the fuck you are, so what are they going to say? <laughs> like, exactly. I tell people that all the time. Like, if I would have paid – I just told this one of my coaches today, one of my newer coaches, because she hasn't posted her first post at all yet, and she keeps telling me that she's scared of what people are going to think of her. And this is people that she doesn't even really know, too. And I said, what if I paid you $1,000 to post that today right now? Would you do it? And she's like, well, yeah. And I said, well, you are the one holding yourself back from making that money right now because of other people's, you know, vision of you. Like, who cares? They're not paying your bills. Who cares? What's the worst that they could say? Like, honestly, yeah. I've been doing this for three years. <laughs> and that's happened to me. I've been doing this for three years. I literally have had people say, you're a fucking bitch. Just because you lost 50 pounds doesn't mean you can send me messages and invite me to do a weight loss group. You know what? At first, it hurt my little feelings, right? It hurt me a little bit. But then I was like, you know what? Fuck it. On to the next invite. Like, and you know what's so funny? That girl that cursed me out, obviously, you know, it's stemming from insecurity within themselves. She signed up with one of my coaches a week later. So I'm just like, okay. Like, <laughs> it's just like, it's, you know, honestly, in your head, you just got to think like, you know, the worst that could happen is they curse you out. They say no, blah, 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 blah. And then it doesn't affect your life. Like Ash said, they don't pay your bills. They don't do anything for you. Um, and honestly, you're just sharing your truth. It's who you are. You're getting healthy. You're sharing your story, something that you're proud of. And like your happiness is all that matters. And you have to remember too, that people are talking shit about you, no matter what you're doing, whether you're doing, yeah, something, that's good, true. You're doing something bad, whatever it is, somebody's talking shit about you. Yeah, that's true. That is hard for truth, Ashley. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's so true. Thank you guys. You're welcome. Jess, your hair looks so on point. I can't even stop looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> I can't hear you, but you look amazing. <laughs> hey. Oh, thanks. I, so I parted it on the other side today, so I'm, it's freaking weird. Like, I don't part it on this side, so I'm like, what is this? <laughs> thanks. So I have good news. Um, through all this weird Instagram, Facebook crap today, I don't know what the fuck's going on. It's driving me nuts. But I had some random woman that, <clears throat> Sam, you know who I'm talking about. <clears throat> some, um, I guess I messaged her in August. And I messaged her again in February. No answer. And she just signed up. So, Yay! As a coach. <laughs> awesome. So we'll see what happens. <sighs> Thanks for Gmail. Thank you, Gmail. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I only worked through my emails today. Yeah. I know. It made me think that I need to start getting my emails from all of my prospects. <laughs> Seriously. Does anyone know why it, like, Facebook and stuff was acting up? I haven't seen anything, just glitches. Before it all happened, I did notice that there were updates on Instagram because I was doing something and I was like, oh, that's new. So I feel like they're, they're probably doing updates, but... <laughs> they probably know. updated something and it caused other things to crash, so they have to fix it. Oh, but that's two, aren't they two completely separate companies? Like, they're not even owned by... Even Etsy was down today. Like, Etsy... Really? Yeah. Google's turning shit down. Well, Raina said yesterday, I think it was, that her Gmail wasn't working. So Yeah, see, Google. Blame them. Monopoly. <laughs> I don't know. Cyber terrorism. Definitely went into a depressive state and was laying in my bed, and then <laughs> my brother walked in. He works at Starbucks. He's like, what are you doing? <laughs> and he was like, I was like, I work on social media. Nothing's working. <laughs> yeah, Andy's saying the same thing. He's like, oh, God. What are you all going to do? I'm like, shut up. <laughs> all right. Awesome. So everyone take Ashley's power hour that she walked through and do it tomorrow when hopefully Instagram and Facebook is up. Anything else, you guys? Any questions, goals, comments, concerns, Punta Cana goals? Uh, is that next year's trip? Yes. Yes. I want, I really want to be diamond and I'm trying not to give up on all these no's. So I'm going to wait, wait, wait. plant seeds and wait for the next few months and keep in mind. You're trying not to give up. You, that is a conscious choice. Giving up versus keep going. <laughs> you can do it. Thanks. Just hitting, the yeah. more news you hear, the more, the sooner somebody else is going to be like, yes, sign me up. I've been waiting for you. That's true. One girl, I thought I was going to sign up this month because she said to check in with her in March, and now she's saying to check in with her in April. So, you know, I'm going to keep bothering her. And then my cousin wanted me to check in with her after she moves, so I was going to try to get her as well. And I have a whole list that I'm working on. So. So when people keep telling me to check in with them the next month and the next month, I always say, What's holding you back from right now? I always say so Maybe that's what I'm doing too wrong. Like, I'm so nice that I'm just like, okay, well, how's your day been? Well, you can say it, you can <laughs> say it in a nice way. No, nah, Ashley's just a bitch. No, <laughs> well, I'm not saying you're a bitch. I just don't, like, I just kind of take the hit and kind of, like, change the subject. Like, obviously, they don't. Like, to, I don't know, like, maybe they don't want to talk about it or something. They might not be ready yet. That's what I've learned. They're yeah. definitely not ready or else they would have joined. But, yeah, I mean, I would say no problem whatsoever. I totally understand. Just curious, though, what's holding you back from signing up? Okay. But, like, somebody told me, oh, I'm allergic to Shakeology. And I was like, oh, no, what ingredients? And they were like, um, soy and dairy. And I was like, perfect, because that's not even in Shakeology. You know, so, or they'll say the time and it's like, okay, cool. Well, most of my workouts are 20 to 30 minutes and it might take three minutes to check into my group. So when you have 33 minutes, get back to me. And they're like, you know, that's kind of snotty because it's like everybody has 33 minutes. She's perfect. Um, 
Yeah, yeah. but I never think, of, like, I don't know. I just have never thought of talking to people that, like, not that it's bad, but, like, I'm so, like, I just, I don't know. I just kind of take it, like, oh, okay, like, I don't know how to explain it. I'm terrible at talking today. I mean, I get it. It's because you're, like, nervous or, like, you don't want to offend them or anything. Another way that I approach it, if, you know, what's holding me back is too strong for you, I say, totally okay, no problem, no worries at all. Um, I'm just curious, like, why you're not ready right now. Don't worry, I'm not going to try and pressure you. Like, all the things are like, don't worry, I'm I'm okay, I'm not going to pressure you, all of that. But why (laughs) yeah and then screenshot it and send it to chelsea and she'll help you respond so just ask why and then we'll swoop in and help you i think a lot of the times it does come down to our conversations and then a lot of people that like they they think that their conversations are going how they should be going but really there there's some help that can be had so don't ever be scared to like oh man like oh, Chelsea's not going to like that I said this or that or whatever. Like, I don't care how you say things. I just, like, want to help guide you and help you say the things you want to say so that you maybe don't offend them or that you can still, you know, sign them up, you know? Well, and I think my biggest thing for a long time, like, I've been trying to get better at this is, like, I rush things. Like, I just want them to sign up. So, like, I, for a while, I was using just Raina scripts. Like, I wasn't editing them at all to be what I was doing. And I'd just send them and just send them and just send them. And I felt like that was getting, like, not personable at all. And um, I wasn't really having that connecting time with them. I was just sending them scripts, like, right off the bat. And I don't know if that's, like, the right thing to do. I generally try to think of conversations like this. If I was on the other end, if I was on the other end of the conversation, would I be responsive to myself? Like, do, do, when you're talking to this girl, would you want to hear that conversation? Would you keep responding to what you were saying? Like, that's the same thing I think about my posts. If I'm posting this, is somebody actually going to read this? Would I be interested in this? Or would I just scroll past in two seconds? Yeah. Okay. I'll try doing that. Like, how would you want to be talked to? Yeah. And again, go back to those voice memos, you know, like try following the scripts, but say it. Um, For me, I do like scripts just because it's easy to copy and paste and all the conversations are the same, basically. But I took Raina's and hers are so blunt and straight to the point in like one word, basically, which is not me. And same thing as Chelsea, I was like, I would not respond to that. So I took hers as a guide and then fluffed it up a little bit. So it's still short and sweet, I think, but it's like three sentences instead of one bullet point, you know? So use them as a guide, talk how you want to talk, try voice messages, but, and, and use us, I swear. And just to give Coley as an example, she sent so many messages and we were like, why are you not a success coach? So I started to review hers and we noticed that she was skipping the part where she was explaining the group. So she was saying like, are you interested in the group? And then was going right into Raina snippets of like, do you work out? And all those questions. I'm like, wait, wait, wait. They don't even know what it is that the group is and that they're going to be set up with all of this. So something so simple, one thing that was missing. And so now we're adding that in and hopefully going to see progress. So use Chelsea or me or Ashley. Yeah, whoever. I'm not always available, I'll be honest. (laughs) (laughs) One of us is. Yo, so this kind of has nothing to do with Beachbody, but I was curious because Ash, you mentioned it earlier. Um, how do you like drinking celery juice? <laughs> <laughs> Who is she? I love her. Not to be TMI, but I have a lot of tummy issues and like digestive issues. So I heard it's really good for that. And I'm like, I'm kind of nervous, but I'm willing to. I'll tell you what, you'll have to shit your guts out, like, 30 <laughs> minutes after you <laughs> I tell <laughs> everyone <laughs> that. <laughs> Are my I think I have that problem, and I love it. I think it's really refreshing. <laughs> really? My oh, my God. It, it goes, like, right through me. I can't do it. There's <laughs> been times. I think it depends on the bun. Sorry, my family's playing music. Can you turn it down? We couldn't tell by your name, Alex. <laughs> um there's been times where I've had 
bunches of celery that like you I juice it and it tastes disgusting. Like dirt. <laughs> but I wash it. But then most of the time it's really good. So I, I don't know, I like it. it it depends, I think, too, on the type of juicer you have. Like, some people don't have a juicer, so they blend it. And I know that that's not, like, as good as, like, that's what I've been doing. actual juicer. Oh, because I don't, I don't have a juicer. I have a blender. So I went on Amazon and bought, like, a nut milk bag, and I was just going to, like, strain it. Okay, this is how good you I could do that. that. Or you could buy a juicer for $30 at Walmart. I've been blending it and straining it through coffee filters because I was waiting to buy that Black & Decker one that's, like, super cheap. Yeah. So okay. and it takes doesn't time. Doesn't that take forever? That would make me not want to do it. Yeah. It takes, it takes like, five to ten minutes, so I kind of haven't done it in the last week. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. I, have to get up I do. Early. You guys, as soon as you get a juicer, record live videos of how you can juice in, like, five minutes and get out the door and go to work if you work full-time or, like, I, that's what I try to do, like, to influence people to do stuff or, like, watch me more. Like, look how fast I can do this shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mar- is your name Mariana? Yeah. Well, who's your coach? Um, my sponsor coach is Steph Denovi, and then um, Nicole Faulkner is my, like, upline. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I thought she was yours, Chelsea. I know. That's what I thought, too. I was like, oh, my gosh. So you're just like me. I know we're going to be best friends. You have to come on the trip. <laughs> Like, you I'm said, like, five words, and I was like, I love her. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to Summit for the first time this year, and I'm, like, super pumped about We're it. We're going to hang out. Yay. Alex is going, too. Who's yes. going to Summit here? Yay. Yes. I could tell we were going to be best friends, and she was like, yo. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask if she was your coach. I thought she was yours, dude. <laughs> Yeah, Actually, I, I wish her a happy birthday today. She's like the bomb. She's been helping me so much. Oh my god. Oh yeah, it's Nicole's birthday. I gotta go tell her. Happy yeah, ladies, I have to go make dinner, but you guys see your face. All right. Good night, night guys. Bye. Thank you. Alrighty. Are we all hopping off? Oh, <laughs> I think well. that's what that was. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh. Wait. One person does it, and then it's like everyone disperses. But yeah, if you guys don't have anything, um, thanks for hopping on. I'll post a recording so you guys can rewatch and or share with your teams. And let's all be in Punta Cana next year. Okay, so I was able to tell me if you any of you were tagged in my Instagram story that I just posted, and I tagged you all in. See if it went through all. Look at you all getting your phones. <laughs> Also, I drink celery juice, and I think it's disgusting, and I chug that shit in the morning, That's and I used to blend it, and it's way better um, juiced, and get organic, clean that shit. <laughs> yeah, I would say um, a lot of times it just tastes like water to me. <laughs> do you drink it on an empty stomach, or do you just have it, like, throughout the day? Because yeah. I actually drink ACV in the morning. Oh, gosh. Maybe we're not best here. <laughs> that That's do that fine. first and then do your celery yeah but don't eat anything and then have celery right. and yeah. well you want to wait 30 minutes after drinking it too before you eat something because then I drink your steak. Thing and I pooped my pants <laughs> sometimes I'll drink my shakeology right after my celery juice and holy moly get the fuck out of my way <laughs> sometimes it all works Especially after like a weekend of like eating and drinking. <laughs> um, okay, I so, like, if I like have it before lunch, like I just I'd... had that mental image of like the bridesmaids scene where they're like all <laughs> oh, <my. laughs> totally like that sometimes too. That's funny. Anyway, did that did it pin to anybody's account? No, not mm. me. But you reminded me to do a boomerang. Can we all do one and then I'll post it tomorrow? Yeah, I'm gonna do a boomerang too. <laughs> Ready? Three, two, one. <laughs> Are you laughing at me? I just feel judgmental laughs. <laughs> I was laughing at you. <laughs> I know you are. I can tell you're laughing at me. <laughs> Get out of my life, man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you, 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 you.
All right. I have work to do because I'm trying to quit my job. So thank That's you all. The best thing I've heard all day. It's it's bad. Like I might lose my job before I'd be quitting my job this week. So um but I really don't care either way. And my job is fun too. So I mean it's like Chelsea work. said. Did Chelsea, did you get fired or you quit? I got fired because well, long story short, but she wanted me to be a coach for her, a beach body coach. Mm-hmm. She and then um my boss and then I chose Jess over her. And then she found out later on because I never told her and then she fired me. That's fucked up. That never happened to me. <laughs> That's fucked up. So look where it got you. Yeah. yeah. So okay, I'm coming to, coming to get you, Chelsea. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys, thank you for hopping on tonight. I'll post the recording in our pages. Bye, guys. Have a great night. Bye. Bye. Good job, Ash.